So in this video we're going to look at the ribs, some of the, the thoracic, the lungs, and the pleural cavities. It's going to actually be spanned over a couple videos. So we're going to first start with the definition of the intercostal space. And so the intercostal space is the space between the rib bones. So it's the space right here that's between it is known as the intercostal space. And basically there are three muscles that close this space. There are the external, the internal, and the innermost muscles. And so the external muscles, much as it sounds, is going to be on the outside. So that's going to be your outermost layer. So if we think about our three layers, it's going to be kind of like this, basically, where we have three layers of muscles that are intertwined within each other. And I know that's a very crude way of showing that. So the way this is going to go, it's going to go superior lateral. So it's going to start up here, and it's going to make its way to the inferior medial. So it's going to be basically going from here. Let me change colors. So our external are going to go superior lateral. Uh, sorry, they're starting superior lateral and making it inferior medial. So the external is going to go like this. The internal is going to be deeper to the, the external, of course. And these fi fibers are going to go superior medial to inferior lateral. So if we think about it, we're starting superior medial, and now we're going inferior lateral. So we're going like this, and this is the internal. Now if we look at the, um, the innermost, these muscles are going to be deep to the internal, so they're going to be under it. And they're made of three subgroup of muscles that lie in the same facial plane. So basically they're going to be in the same plane and they're going to be basically going down. And now the internal muscles, they're the ones that are um, important for uh, forced exhalation. They're going to depress the ribs, keep the innermost um, intercostal space from blowing or, um, or sucking during uh, sucking in too much air during respiration. So this is going to basically be, these muscles are used to protect the ribs. Now the external muscles, as you probably guessed, as we're going from the superior lateral to the inferior medial, we're not going to have as much of a muscle towards the sternum. So it's going to be more deficient as we get towards the midclavicular line as well as the, the sternum itself. And the last thing in terms of like the muscles and some of the, the perimeter, I guess you can say, is the diaphragm. And you've probably heard of it. It's this dome-shaped uh, muscle that separates the cavity of the abdominal cavity from the, uh, the lungs or the thoracic cavity. It's pierced by the aorta, the esophagus, and the inferior vena cava. So we're going to quickly label the different parts of the sternum. So if we look at the sternum, this big bone right here is the manubrium. This part right here is the clavicular notch. And as the name says, it's going to be where the clavicular uh, the clavicle is going to basically come in. This is the jugular notch, and you probably guessed that the, the jugular is going to come down and pass through this area, going behind the sternum. Then we have the coastal cartilage um, attachment for the first rib, which is right here, because we have our first rib here, this is the coastal cast, uh, um, cartilage. This area is very important, this is called the sternal angle. This is the base of the sternum. Now the bottom two have an advantage because it's the weirdest name possible. This point of attachment for the sternum to this little base is called the xiphosternal joint. And as you can tell, 
sternal is in there from sternum, and the xypha comes from the xiphoid process, which is this last little bit right here. Now if we were to look at an individual rib, it looks sort of like this. And the parts of the rib are, this little notch right here that we see is the superior particular facet. This is the head right here. We have the crest of the head the inferior particular facet and then these two spots right here this is the articular part and the non articular and these are all under the heading of the turbicle as you probably guessed, this right here is the body. And as the rib starts to curve, you have this thing called the coastal groove. And this last little bit is the site of articulation with the coastal cartilage. So those are all the parts of the sternum and the, the rib itself. Now if we want to look at what's going to supply the ribs with blood, so we want to look at the, the arterial system There are a couple different arteries that are going to pass through. So if we go back to our drawing sort of of the, the rib, we know that the aorta is going to pass through because we know that the heart is going to be kind of on the left side or a little bit more prominent on the left side of the rib. But there is a little more I drew my xiphoid process a little bit too big, but that's okay. There's a little bit more um, involved in the vasculatures as well as the, the nervous system. That's that's going on here. So I'm trying to make this drawing as quick as possible, just so you know. You guys don't have to sit here watching me draw so much. And so, what we have is, from the aorta, we have the posterior intercoastal arteries that are going to come down, and they're branching from the dis descending aorta into the intercostal spaces. Um, and we're going to get into, in the next couple of videos, we're going to get into what's the heart look like, what are the vasculatures, um, and, you know, what to look for when you're doing your dissections. So we have the internal thoracic artery, which is usually right around here. And the internal thoracic, as it kind of sounds, it's internal to the thoracic. So it's going to be this long artery that's going down. And then this is going to feed into the anterior intercostal, the pericardial, uh, pericardial phrenic artery. Um, the musculophrenic artery, as well as the super superior epigastric arteries. Now, let's first look at the anterior intercostal artery. This is going to run in the intercostal space and anastomose with the posterior intercostal arteries at the midclavicular line. So, if we look at the clavicle, 
wherever it may be on this. Um, the anterior uh, is going to be somewhere around here. So it's going to be these branching off that we see. Anytime we see these branching off, that's probably the anterior intercostal. And as I said, these are going to run in the intercostal spaces. So if we remember the term, intercostal means space between the two ribs. So they're going to run between the two, two, and then they're going to finally anastomose, meaning that they're going to crash into other veins and and arteries, and allow for the dispersal of blood into the muscle tissues. Then we have the pericardiophrenic artery, and this is the really the first branch of the inter, inter, internal thoracic artery. Um, the origin is around the subclavian. So the subclavian is going to be the origin for this. So we have the subclavian artery. And then it's going to break into the pericardiophrenic. And so it's going to probably be somewhere around here. And what this does is it's going to feed the pericardial sac. This is the sac that surrounds the heart. And it's also going to feed the diaphragm and accompany the, the phrenic nerve. So this is going to go along with the phrenic nerve, or kind of cross the phrenic nerve. It's going to feed the pericardial sac, because we, we know right around the sixth rib, somewhere around here, we're expecting to find the heart. So it's going to feed into the heart. Sorry, a little higher than the sixth rib because I realized how low it is. It's probably around the third or the second, uh, fourth. Um, now we have the musculophrenic artery. This is the one that I'm thinking of that shows up. Uh, the division starts around the sixth rib. So we would expect the musculophrenic to be right around here. And this is the terminal branch of the internal thoracic. So we said this is the internal thoracic. And so this is going to be one of those branches that are going to end, and you don't have to worry about any other named branches thereafter. Um, and it's going to run into the costodiaphragmatic recess to supply the diaphragm. So this is going to also be one that supplies the diaphragm. Now on the other side of the split, we have what is called the superior epigastric artery. This is also a terminal branch of the internal thoracic. Uh, it's going to pass the po uh, pass posterior to the costal margin and it descends into the app wall. So this is going to go further on down into the app wall, and this is going to kind of stay around where the diaphragm is. Now the venous return is a little more straightforward. You have the inner internal thoracic vein, and then you have the intercostal drain into the azygous system. What azygous means is asymmetric network of venous channels and posterior aspect of the th thoracic. It does not exist in pairs, so this is just going to go down one. So it's technically called a hemizygous vein. Hemi meaning one or different. So for the nerve video, we're going to make. I'm going to separate that out because it's kind of a long area. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, please, please leave them below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks.